Line integrals in space example one. In the last video, we came up with this method for evaluating a line integral. To integrate a continuous function, f of x, y, z over a curve c, first find a smooth parametrization of c, r of t equals g of t i plus h of t j plus k of t k, with t ranging from constants a to b, and then evaluate the integral as the integral over c of f of x, y, z, ds, which is equal to the integral from a to b of f of g of t, h of t, k of t, times the magnitude of velocity, times dt. If you didn't watch the first video, I encourage you to go back and see how we came up with this, um, this way of evaluating a line integral. Practice. Find the line integral of f of x, y, z equals x plus y squared minus z minus 4 over the straight line segment from 1, 2, 3, to 0, negative 1, 1. So they're giving us a starting point and an ending point, but they're counting on us to come up with the parametrization for the curve and the starting and ending t values. So that's what we want to do first, is come up with r of t. So first I notice they say straight line segment. And I remember from Unit 1 that the parametrization of a line is x equals x0 naught plus v1t, y equals y0 naught plus v2t, and z equals z0 naught plus v3t. Now I have this um, starting point, 1, 2, 3, and ending point, 0, negative 1, 1. So I'll write those down, my starting point, 1, 2, 3. That's going to be my x0, y0, z0. You always use your starting point as your um, piece of 0, your x0, y0, z0. I have the ending point, 0, negative 1, 1, and I'm going to use the starting and ending points to help me find the vector v1, v2, v3. So vector v1, v2, v3 is going to equal the v1 component is 0, minus 1. Notice that's the ending x value minus the starting x value. The v2 component is negative 1 minus 2 and notice that's the ending y value minus the starting y value. The z component is 1 minus 3, the ending z value minus the starting z value. And so your v1, v2, v3 should always be your ending minus your starting. Now, this evaluates as negative 1, negative 3, negative 2. So that's my v1, v2, v3, and I plug those into the parametrization. So now my parametrization is x equals 1 minus 1t, y equals 2 minus 3t, and z equals 3 minus 2t. So my curve, C, is parametrized as the vector equation R of t equals 1 minus 1 ti, notice that was just my x, plus 2 minus 3 tj, and that was my y, plus 3 minus 2 tk, and that was my z. Now if you've set up your straight line segment like this, you should always be able to get um, your starting point and ending point with t equals 0 and 1. 
Notice that r of 0 equals the starting point, 1, 2, 3, and r of 1 equals the ending point, 0, negative 1, 1. If you follow this setup for a straight line segment, this will always be the case. And so I get t is between 0 and 1. So now I have my constant bounds and I have my parametrization. Now I'm ready to, um, to start setting up the pieces of my line integral. Okay, so a new slide. Um, we're still finding the line integral of f of x, y, z equals x plus y squared minus z minus 4 over the straight line segment from 1, 2, 3 to 0, negative 1, 1. We found that the curve c is parametrized by r of t equals 1 minus 1 t i plus 2 minus 3 t j plus 3 minus 2 t k with t ranging from 0 to 1 and the i component is x, the j component is y, and the k component is z. So now remember our line integral formula is the integral over c of f of x, y, z times the magnitude of velocity times dt. So I want to evaluate f of x, y, z which is x plus y squared minus z minus 4, with the x, y, and z from my curve plugged in. So in the curve, x is 1 minus 1t, so I'm going to get 1 minus 1t. y is 2 minus 3t, so I'll get plus 2 minus 3t squared z is 3 minus 2t, so I have minus z, minus 3 minus 2t, and then minus 4. And I want to simplify this, so I multiply it all out. 1 minus t plus 4 minus 12t plus 9t squared minus 3 plus 2t minus 4. So I foiled out the squared polynomial, and now I combine like terms. This is equal to 9t squared minus 11t minus 2. So what that tells me is over the curve c, my function f is actually equivalent to 9t squared minus 11t minus 2. Now the other piece I need is the velocity and its magnitude. So v of t is equal to r prime t. So I just take the derivative of r with respect to t. So I have negative 1i minus 3j minus 2k. The i, j, and k components of r are linear, so it ends up just being the coefficients of t. The magnitude of this is easy because it comes out as a constant. Magnitude of v of t equals square root of 1 plus 9 plus 4, so squaring the i, j, and k components, that gives me the square root of 14. So now let's set up our line integral. Our line integral is equal to the integral from, remember t equals 0 to 1, so the integral from 0 to 1 of f of x, y, z, which we evaluated as 9t squared minus 11t minus 2, times the magnitude of the velocity of t, and that was square root of 14, times d of t. So there's our line integral set up, and once you have it set up, it's just a single variable integration, so it should be something that you're very familiar with. So we're going to evaluate that integral. I'm going to pull out the square root of 14 and then integrate the 9t squared minus 11t minus 2. So I have square root of 14, 3t cubed, 
minus 11 halves t squared minus 2t evaluated from 0 to 1. Remember to do your f of b minus f of a, so upper bound plugged in minus lower bound plugged in. And that gives me square root of 14 times negative 9 halves. And let's just rewrite this a little nicer. We get negative 9 square root of 14 all over 2. So that is the value of the line integral of f of x, y, z equals x plus y squared minus z minus 4 over the straight line segment from 1, 2, 3 to 0, negative 1, 1. So hopefully you see how it all fits together. You find your parametrization. You use that to um, put your function, f, in terms of t. You find the velocity. Use that to find the magnitude of the velocity. And then you evaluate your line integral um, based on that f function in terms of t and your magnitude of velocity. So two things that we need to know, and these have to do with paths between two points. The value of the line integral will, in general, be different along two different paths even if those two paths have the same starting and ending points. This makes sense because our function f might be doing something different above two different paths. If the path from point A to point B consists of the union of more than one curve function, then we find the line integral over each of those curves and add the results together to get the total line integral. So here's a couple um, examples. Say in my xy plane I have a path going from 0, 0 to 1, 1. I'm going to call 0, 0 point A and 1, 1 point B. So I'm going to um, talk about three different paths. So say my first path is just a straight line segment. So curve C is a straight line from 0, 0 to 1, 1. Path 2 is a parabolic curve from 0, 0 to 1, 1. And path 3 is the straight line segment from 0, 0 to 1, 0 and then the straight line segment from 1, 0 to 1, 1. So I actually have two curves, C1 and C2, that I'll have to integrate over. Now to parameterize this, my first straight line from 0, 0 to 1, 1 is y equals x. So my parametrization could be r of t equals ti plus tj. Because remember, i is the x term, j is the y term. And this ranges from t equals 0 to 1. My second curve is y equals x squared. So I could parametrize this as r of t equals ti plus t squared j, with t going from 0 to 1. And then my third path, which is the union of the two paths, C1 and C2, C1 gets parametrized by R of t equals ti plus 0j, t ranging from 0 to 1. That's because the x is changing, but the y is remaining 0. C2 can be parametrized as R of t equals 1i plus tj, because x is remaining 1 and y is changing, and t goes, goes from 0 to 1. So since um, the third curve is c1 with the union of c2, I would have to do two different line integrals and then add the results together to get the total. So just a few things to keep in mind. 
different line integrals along different paths and if your path is more than one curve do separate line integrals and add the results together.